Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 12 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. We're going to wrap up our talk about um, our characters facing in this video by creating some visual cues so that we can easily see which way our character is facing, which is going to make it a lot easier for us to uh, confirm that our interactions and our attacks are working properly. So, in order to do this, we're going to start, I'm going to right click on player over here, and I'm going to add a 3D sphere object. Uh, nothing's going to appear in the game view, but if we look here, we can see that the sphere kind of appears. It's just within the bounds of our cube. And I'm going to simply move that, um, keep it on 0 and 0 for X and Y position, but for Z, we're going to make that uh, negative 0 0.5. That's going to kind of push it into this uh, closest edge of the cube for us. I'm also going to reduce its scale to about 0.4 on all three axes. And I'm going to remove this sphere collider component. This is not going to need a collider. And I'm just going to rename this from sphere to facing sphere so we know what its role is in this setup. I'm also going to jump over to our materials. I'm going to duplicate our player material. Uh, just hit Control D to do that. I'm going to rename this to uh, Facing Sphere as well. I'm going to change the color a little bit. We're going to make it, say, a green. Nice bright green there. And I'm actually going to change its um, shader from the standard to an unlit shader. And what that does is basically it's going to make this sphere a solid color once we add it to it and no matter what the lighting conditions are and that's going to be useful for say for example this um, side over here can get kind of shaded on the cube and so we don't want to lose that um, facing right now. So now I'm just going to drag that and you can normally you'd be able to just click and drag it onto the object in the cube or actually I, I can do that because it's now out of the cube over here. So yeah that's probably the easiest way if you just move your uh, scene view around a little bit then you can just click and drag that right onto the sphere. You could also, in the facing sphere object in the inspector, just open up materials and change out this uh, material here. I think it would probably say something like default or diffuse, and you just change it to that facing sphere. So now we have this very visible cue to see which way we're facing. Now we need to actually code into our system to say, when we change our facing, we want to tell this um, this cue that it should move appropriately. And there's a number of ways you can actually, we could visually change the facing of an object. We could have a sprite that's going to change to a different set of sprites when it's looking a different direction. We could be moving a 3D model or even just part of a 3D model. What our final system would be for this, you know, if we made a finalized game out of it, could be any of these things. Mm. So I'm going to set this up so that this system can kind of modularly work. We can pull out this facing sphere system we have right now, which is really just kind of a temporary solution, and put in something else without having to completely rewrite the event system we're going to create. And so how we're going to do that is we are going to use events. And what events are, are kind of a way for your scripts to announce to whoever is listening and say this thing just happened in this case our character just turned changed their facing and anything that's listening will then be able to act on that and this is nice because like i say we're not beholden to saying oh there has to be this specific type of system going to be working here we could put on anything any other kind of system we wanted for this and it would still work so Let's jump over to our scripts, into our model scripts, and we're going to open up our walking controller again. Inside of here, we're going to add a new category down here. I'm going to call this delegates and events. And in here, I'm going to add two lines of code. I'm going to add a public delegate. And I'm going to, it's going to return a type of void. And I'm just going to call this facing change handler. It's common a lot of times to see um, delegates called handlers because they're 
Um, they're not specifically what's happening. Like, you're not going to say here, oh, this was the facing change, so call this the facing change event or something like that. It's just more of a way to handle any type of change, in this case, for facing. And now we also have to set our parameters in here. And the only parameter I'm going to use for this is I'm going to pass in the facing direction enum that we created in the last video so that whatever is listening to say oh there's been a facing change hey what what direction are you facing and we'll be able to pass that right here so I'm gonna say facing direction and we'll just name it FD for now so that's a delegate and a delegate is basically a template for your events so what we're saying is that anything Anything that's ever going to listen to an event has to return void and then has to take a facing direction. Now we're going to create the actual event that um, other scripts can listen for. So we're going to say public. I'm going to make it static so that we can listen. We can listen to it from anywhere. Um, event, and we're just going to call this on facing change. We don't have to put in any parameters or return types here. And that would that should be all we need here. I'm not exactly sure why it's giving me a... Oh, because I never actually named, sorry. Public event facing change handler, because that's the type of event it is, has to, um, has to inherit from this delegate. And then we'll say on facing change. There we go my mistake. So now this is an event that we can call in this case when our facing changes. So let's do that. Down in our actual change face method right now all we're doing we were what we were doing last video is we were just debugging the facing to make sure it was working properly. Now instead what we're going to do is we're going to actually call our change facing event. How we'll do that down here instead of logging or facing is we're going to say on facing change and we'll pass in whatever we've now made the facing. Mm -hmm. Now there's one other thing you have to do in Unity and in C Sharp in general when you're calling an event which is that you need to make sure that there is something listening to the event because if nothing is listening and it tries to call itself it will throw an error which isn't ideal but is just kind of how it works so what we're going to do is we're just going to say if on facing change does not equal null then we'll cut this and paste it into here in that case we'll actually call this so on the off chance that we change our facing and nothing cares about it we don't need to call the event so that's all we need to do in here. Now we need a script to actually tell our facing sphere where to move. Let's jump back over to Unity. We're going to create this. I'm actually going to create a new folder because this is kind of a rendering thing more than it is actually part of the model of our scripts. So I'm going to create a new folder called view scripts in honor of the model controller view system or model view controller system open this up and I'm going to create a C-sharp script. I'm going to call this, you guessed it, Facing Sphere. I'm going to add that right to our Facing Sphere object. We see that gets added down here. And I'll open this up in Mono Develop. And Facing Sphere is going to have just a couple of things in here. I'm going to have one variable which is basically going to reflect how our current facing sphere is offset by about 0.5 units um, to, in order for it to stick out of the cube. So I'm going to reflect that with a public float. I'm going to just call it offset. And we're going to set that equal to 0.5. Mm -hmm. Next, I'm going to have a awake function. And in here is where we're actually going to assign our method, which we're going to create, to the um, change on facing change event. But in order to do that, I need to have that method. So I'm going to also create a void. We'll call this refresh facing 
and this is going to require a facing direction FD because that is what the event um, delegate is passing into it. So now in awake we can say walking because this is static we don't need to have a reference to a specific instance we can just say walking controller dot you should see it here on facing change plus equals because we're going to be adding this our method to this list of methods and we're going to add refresh facing to that you know we don't need parentheses or parameters here because we're not actually calling the um, method we're actually just passing the method into the list that our event is tracking or our event is speaking to um, at some point I'm actually going to do a video on events because it is kind of a weird a little bit of a weird system if you're not wrapping your head around it um, hopefully I'm explaining it okay but if not um, just kind of stick with this and um, like I say hopefully I'll have a series about that out soon to clear it up a little bit better finally in our refresh facing method we're actually going to just take a look see what the facing direction we received is and move that sphere accordingly if it's you know for moving south we want it facing toward the camera like we have it if we want, if we're moving east or west we want it to the right or the left and if it's north it should be in the back of the cube how we're going to do this is with a switch statement. If you're not familiar with switch statements, they're basically a convenient way if you've got a single thing you're looking at and there's a bunch of possibilities of what it could be. A switch statement is a great way to do it rather than saying if this, then this, else, if this, else, if this, so on and so forth. Switch statement is a great option. So we're going to say switch, and the, what we're going to look at is this facing direction we're passing in. So FD, and then we put some brackets here and we're gonna say if the case is facing direction dot north so in this case which is the case being if FD equals facing direction dot north then we want the transform dot local position make sure you put local position or else this is gonna just hover around the origin and not move with your cube equals vector3 dot forward times that offset that we made and then we can break which means it's just going to skip the rest of the switch statement and go to the end of the method our next case is if we're going east and we'll say transform dot local position equals vector 3 dot right multiply that by the offset and then we'll break again now we would the order I had it here was northeast southwest so we would presumably go to south next but I actually want south to be kind of the default I want our um, system to say oh if, if for some reason we don't have a facing or if something's gone awry just mm -hmm. look toward the camera so I'm going to actually go to west next. Skip south for now, and you'll see why in just a second. But I'm going to say west. Um, the local position will be to the left times the offset. And then finally, we're going to have a default case. Switches should generally have a default case. So in this case, either if we've gone through, it's none of these three, or if somehow we have some weird facing direction in there. In that case, we're just going to go look at it south. So I'll copy these. And we'll change it to vector three dot back. So depending on what the direction we're going, we're going to move that Q to kind of the leading direction we're moving in. So what should happen now is when we go to Unity here, we'll save this and hit play. And what we should see is almost as if our cube now has a green nose. We move south, it stays to the south. It moves there to the west or to the east rather, to the west, and in north we can't actually see it because it's in back here, but it is in fact there. So that is working just the way we want it to. Now we have this easy way to say, okay, I can see the green sphere, I am facing this particular direction, and 
I know that if I'm attacking or interacting, that should be the direction I'm doing it in. So in our next video, we can actually start getting into some of those um, action buttons and seeing how they work. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.